Welcome to this webcast on UN's principles of responsible investment. I am Usman Hayat and joining me are representatives from three signatories to the principles who would be sharing with us their perspectives. They are Kirsty Jenkinson from FNC Asset Management Limited, David Russell from University Superannuation Scheme and Colin Melvin from Hermes Fund Managers Limited. My first question to you is why did your firm choose to be a signatory to the principles of responsible investment? At FNC, when the principles for responsible investment were launched in 2006, we were very encouraged by um, the development because it sort of reinforced a lot of the work that we'd already been doing on responsible investment and trying to promote the integration of environmental, social and governance issues into the way in which we invest at FNC. So I think our main motivation for signing was to sort of confirm a lot of the um, efforts that we've been putting in for the past few number of years on trying to integrate ESG issues and really to try and see a sort of a groundswell movement across the whole financial industry um, about how this can be adopted more broadly. Because I think for it really to work, what you need is for investors all around the world, as the PRI is trying to do, to really take this issue very seriously and to have a sort of a forum and a, a secretariat that can help to implement that uh, um, globally. US has uh, signed up to the PRI because as a global investor, we wanted to work with other investors from around the world to um, encourage better performance in terms of governance, in terms of management, environmental, social issues within the companies in which we invest. By working with other funds, other pension funds, other asset managers around the world, we believe that we can have a stronger influence on those companies in terms of generating better long-term performance for our funds. We were very closely involved in the PRI's development uh, and are strong supporters of it. Uh, specifically, Hermes Fund Managers Limited wanted to sign up because it wanted other partners to engage alongside when dealing with the companies that it best invests in. This process of engagement, as you all know, is a process whereby we uh, discuss with the corporate management, the senior directors of companies, what's in our common long-term interests as owners uh, over the longer run. Uh, and that work is something that Hermes does very extensively. Uh, one area where we've developed this is within, Her within Hermes Equity Ownership Services, which is the division that I run of Hermes, where we support pension funds in dealing with their obligations as PRI signatories. How did your firm go about implementing the principles of responsible investment? At FNC, uh, we really, once we'd signed the principles for responsible investment, uh, wanted to make sure that we were able to fully demonstrate to our clients and also to the external world how well we were implementing each of the six principles. Uh, now, obviously, there are a number of different steps involved in that, ranging from principle one, which talks a lot about integration, which is really trying to firm up your investment processes to show that ex um, explicit reference or explicit understanding of environmental, social and governance issues are taking into account when thinking about um, you know, stock analysis and bond analysis as well. So I think it's all to do with you know, how well you can really formalise investment processes to capture these other issues that maybe traditionally haven't been um, touched on in the past. So that's sort of one element, obviously. But I think um, the other area that we have already been doing quite a lot of work on is on our um, engagement programmes, which is really using the voice that you have as a large asset manager and that of clients as well, to try and push companies that you invest in to really respond well to uh, or respond to the environmental, social and governance challenges that they face and also opportunities in their business. So for us, it was really about demonstrating how our engagement programmes across a wide range of issues can really sort of encourage long term business success and business performance. Um, this involves as well many of the other principles, principle three, which is looking at disclosure. You know, how do you encourage companies to really disclose um, the environmental, social and governance issues and um, affecting their business? But I think the interesting thing with PRI is those first principles very much apply to what you do as an organisation. But principles four and five are really about addressing the, sort of the broader financial markets and really using the leverage that you know an investor such as FNC has to, to bring other participants along with them, to sort of work together in collaboration to really tackle some of these you know, systemic market problems that I think are facing us, largely to, you know, relating to ESG issues. So a lot of collaborative work um, is something that we've been uh, involved in very heavily and continue to be through the PRI. Initiatives such as the Clearing House enables investors to work a little bit more efficiently together than in the past, and I think that's very powerful. 
Um, and then finally, you know, if I was just going to comment on principle six, which is about reporting, how well can we as the financial market sort of be transparent about how we're doing all of this kind of work? I think for FNC, that's been an area of real focus. We have a pretty sophisticated approach to reporting, um, whether it's to our clients, whether it's just, you know, generally to the companies that we invest in. So we're fully transparent. And I think, you know, that area is an important um, an important side for making sure that the industry is um, very credible, very professional. And I think you need, we need to be transparent about what we do. Many of the principles themselves were in areas that USS was, was already active. We have uh, been looking at responsible investment for some eight or nine years now. So we have been engaging with companies. We have been trying to encourage better performance. We've been trying to integrate these issues into our investment decision-making processes. What PRI has enabled us to do is to learn what other funds have been doing as well so that we can improve the practice we have in taking our data, which is sometimes quite difficult to handle and difficult to integrate into investment decisions and learn from how other people have been doing that and help our internal asset managers uh, incorporate issues that are sometimes very difficult to quantify into either their financial models or more, more usually into the mental models, the pictures they, they build in, in their minds of, of companies before they invest. Hopefully that enables them to make better investment decisions. Implementation takes place primarily in two ways. One, you look at the investment decision, and two, you look at the ownership of the asset. The other principles, whilst very important, are largely supportive of the, of the first two. In terms of principle one, what we've done, and this is an ongoing process, we don't think we're there yet, is that we've produced a matrix of what it means to be a responsible owner or investor uh, in, in various ways for different asset classes and interpreted for, interpreted for different asset classes. So, for example, uh, as an investor in equities, how do you adjust your analysis in order to take account of the social, environmental and governance factors that are financially material, which of course is what PRI is all about. And that makes sense in different ways for private equity, uh, for property, uh, for hedge funds. And we have investments in all of these areas and are considering how to apply it in all of these areas. The other aspect is the ownership of the underlying asset. We have a specific service that we provide through Hermes, which helps funds deal with this. And that's applied to all of Hermes investments also, whereby we engage with companies where, where our clients have an equity shareholding, a bond shareholding, and now we're applying that also to private equity uh, and, and other aspects of our business.